In this video, I'll be going over how to use the line render in order to draw lines and attach edge colliders to them. And we'll be using the input system manager we created in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend seeing it because we make a input manager that uses the new input system in order to manage events. And we're going to call that in this video. And to go over a recap of the last video, we made an input asset action to keep track of all of our mouse controls and we made an input manager class in order to read those values. And then in our line manager class that we're going to make today, we're going to be calling that input manager class in order to retrieve those values. So let's get started. And then let's just go over to our line manager script. And so here we're going to be subscribing to those events. So let's do that. So I'm just going to erase these functions for now and add them in later. So we want an on enable function. So when the script is enabled, let's subscribe to those events. So we can do this statically as so input manager dot on start draw. And then we can subscribe to an event here, which we can say down here. So private void on start draw. And we can just place that right there as so. And you can do the same with on disable. So you just copy that, but instead of the plus, you minus it. So you're unsubscribing to the event. And so you can do it as so with the static. But since we actually need a reference anyways to call those functions, we can actually remove the static. So let me show you what I mean. So let's have an on awake function. And here we'll have a reference to our input manager. So private input manager, input manager. And here we can say input manager dot get component input manager. So these two scripts are going to be under the same game object, which is why we can get it like this. And so instead of just calling the static one, we can actually call the member variable and then you can actually erase the static if you'd like. So that's another way you can do it. But if you have a lot of scripts depending on this one and you don't necessarily want a reference to it, then you can make them static. All right. So then on our enable function, let's subscribe to all the other events. So I'll just copy them in to make life easier. So let's just copy in the on enable and on disable ones. And I'm going to be replacing the static reference with our member variable. And we actually need functions for these. So I'm just going to go ahead and make those functions. Private void on end draw. Private void on start erase. And private void on end erase. And we have to make sure our functions match. So right here, let's just replace those. All right, so we've subscribed to all the events here on on enable. Here we unsubscribe to the events so we can get rid of those references. And then here all I've done is make the functions that we need. So another cool thing that you can do is on top of your class, you can say require component type of, and then we can say we need to have an input manager attached to this game object in order to use this line manager. So this is good just in case you're adding stuff and you might miss something. Require component is a good use for that. Now let's actually draw something. So let's make a new region. I'm going to call it private. Here we'll have our private variables. And so we want to keep track of a list of our lines. So we're going to be instantiating a new object per line. And that's so we can attach a collider to each of our lines very easily. We also want to keep a list of vector twos which keeps track of our current line. So our current line will have many positions. So each line has a bunch of vector twos, which is its X and Y position. And that's how it makes up a line. And we're going to be using this in order to pass this into the edge collider so that we can have accurate collision with the line. Another thing that we want is to keep track of our current line renderer. And so all of these are just to make our life easier in the future. So we can call them in different functions. And finally, let's have an edge collider. Let's call that current line edge collider. So each of our lines will have a line render and an edge collider 2D. And I'm just going to add in private. And then another thing that we want to keep track of is if we're drawing or not. So we can just say private bool drawing. You can equal it to false to start off. And then we want to keep track of if we're erasing or not erasing equals false. One other thing that we want to keep track of is our main camera because we're going to be using our main camera in order to convert our screen coordinates into world coordinates. And we can just have a reference to that up here. So we can say private camera, main camera. And we're going to set that right here in our awake function. We can say main camera equals camera dot main. And I'm just going to move this input manager 
into our private region just to be a little neater. All right, so now we can actually start to do stuff after we have our preparations done. So when we start drawing, we want to start getting that mouse position on every frame and then evaluating it to get its world position and then we're going to be drawing that line. So in order to do that in the most simple way and to not populate an update function with a bunch of stuff, we can use curatines. So we can say start curatine and we can start one called drawing. And down here we can just say IE numerator drawing. So we're just going to start this function over here. And here we can say drawing equals true. And after we set our drawing variable to true, we want to actually start populating our lists with our line. So we're going to have a helper function here called start line, which we will fill out in a minute. And then while we're drawing, so a while loop, while we are drawing, I'm just going to say yield return null for now, which just means nothing happens. And then after that, we're going to end the line. In our while function here, we're going to make another function called add point. So while we're drawing, we're going to be adding our points to our list. So instead of passing in the screen position of the mouse coordinates directly, we can have another helper function called get current world point, where we will get our mouse position in world coordinates to make our life simpler. And so we actually need to make all of these functions. So let's start with the private vector two, get current world point. And that's very simple. All we're doing here is calling the input manager dot get mouse position. So all we're doing is getting that mouse position and we're converting that to world coordinates. And you can do that through the main camera. So we can say main camera dot screen to world point. And then we can just pass in our screen mouse coordinates. So that was pretty simple. Next, we need a start line function. So I'm just going to say that here. So private void start line. And here we'll be creating our line game object and attaching a line render and a collider to it. So we can say current line, which we set up below, equals new list of vector twos. And then here we can make a new game object. So game object current line equals new game object. You can give that game object a name. So current line dot name equals, you can just say line. You can add something else to it. So actually I named the game object exactly the same as the list. So I'm just going to say current line object instead. Let's make the current line object dot transform dot parent equal to this transform. And all that will do is make this game object the parent of this new object. And that's to make sure that we're not populating our hierarchy with a bunch of lines so that we can keep our hierarchy neat. And then we can say current line game object dot add component and we can add in a line render and we can equal that to our current line render then we can just say current line edge collider equals current line object dot add component and add in an edge collider 2d and so let's declare a bunch of variables that we're going to be needing up here so let's do a serialized field so we can see our private variable in the editor and let's say private float. Then we have a couple variables we want to keep track of. So we have line separation distance. And this will keep track of the distance between our points, because since we're doing this on every frame, a bunch of our points are going to be very close together. And you can actually specify how far apart you want them to be so that you don't have just a bunch of points together. And that might increase performance if you limit the amount of distance between each point. So we can just say point to F for this one. And let's just do another serialized field and we can say private float line width, which is the width of the line that we want. So in this case, I found this value to be good, point 0.1. And we can just say our line color. So we can say private color line color. And I'm just going to set the default to color dot black. Finally, we can have something called line cap vertices, private int line cap vertices. And so this is the number of vertices on the edge of the line. So I'm just going to say five. And the more vertices that you put at the end of the line, the smoother the, the curve will be at the end. So I'm just going to comment these two functions out and I'm going to show you what I mean. So if we create an empty and then we add a line render, then you can see that we have something 
called end cap vertices, which is how many vertices to add at each end. If you don't add this, it's just a sharp cutoff, but if you add it, it's gonna be kind of rounded. All right, and now that we have those settings down, let's go back to our start line function. Let's set up our settings. So let's say current line render dot position count equals zero. So this is how many vertices we currently have. So we don't have any, so we have to set it to zero. We can say current line render dot start width. So the width it starts with, and we're just gonna say line width. And we also have to set the end width of our line, and we're gonna set it to the same width because we want our lines to be uniform in their width. And then we can say current line render dot num cap vertices equals line cap vertices. All right, and then we can also set the line render material. So we can say the current line render dot material. And then here we can just say new material shader dot find particles standard unlit. So all it's doing here is making a new material and it's doing shader dot find. So it's finding a specific shader and it's finding the particles slash standard unlit shader. And so I just copy this one in and then we can just do current line render dot start color equal our line color and same thing with our end color. So current line render dot end color equals line color. And then lastly, we can set the edge radius of our edge collider. So we can say current line edge collider dot edge radius. And then I can just set it to point one. I found that to be a good value. So this is how thick you want the edge collider to be. You don't want it too big or else it'll look like the player is floating in the air. All right, so then onto our next function in our drawing. Now we can do an add a point function. So here we'll add in our point. So we can say here, private void add point. And then we can pass in our point. So vector two point, and this is in world position. If you remember right here, we called this function get current world point. And then we can say, if we can place the point, then let's add the point to our list. If we can place the point, so here we're gonna be checking if we can place the point. And that's just checking the distance between the previous point. If we can place the point, then let's say current line dot add, let's add in our point. We can say current line render, dot position count plus plus. We're adding in another position to our line render. And then we can just say current line render dot set position. So we're setting the position of our new point. And then we have to pass in right here. You can see we have to pass in the index and the position. So we just want to add it in the end. So we can say current line render dot position count minus one. So this is the last point and we can just pass in the point. And so now let's make that place point function. So it's gonna return a Boolean. It's gonna say place point. We're gonna pass in the vector two point. So here we're gonna check if first of all, we don't have any points. So we can say if current line dot count equals zero, then we can just return true because we don't have to check anything. And then if we actually do have any points, we can just say vector two distance. If the distance is big enough, between the previous points. So we can pass in our current point and we can pass in our previous point, which is current line. And then we say current line dot count minus one. So this is just the index of the last point and we pass it in to our current line to see what our last point is. If that distance is less than the line separation distance, then we can just return false. Else return true. Here we're saying if it's far enough in distance between the previous point, then return true. All right, another function down. Now let's do the end line function. So private void end line. So when our line ends, all that we wanna do is set those points in our edge collider. So we can say current line edge collider dot set points. And we can just pass in our current line, which is our vector two of points. So currently when we start drawing, we call this curatine. We set drawing to true while we're drawing. And when we're done, just end the line and add that to the edge collider. So here in end draw, we have to say drawing equals false. So we can exit out of this while loop when we stop drawing. And then another thing that I like to do is I wanna make sure that we're not drawing while we're erasing. So I can just say while we're not erasing, then we can start that curatine. 
because you don't want to be drawing and erasing. All right, so let's run the program and see what happens. So let's just right click on our hierarchy, create empty, and let's call this manager. And we can add in our line manager as well as our input manager. See, it adds it in automatically because we have that require component. And then you can see all of our values are populated since I specified the defaults. All right, so I started the program and now you can see that we are drawing successfully. And you can see now, if you look at this scene view, we have a bunch of edge colliders here. And the width is almost perfect. You can make it a little smaller, maybe 0 0.08. So let's try drawing again, see how that looks. 0 0.08 seems to be the best value, or maybe a little bit smaller, but that's good enough for now. So make sure to set that again since we were playing the game. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video we'll be going over how to make the eraser functionality so we can actually erase the lines. And I want to thank all my patrons for supporting me, I really appreciate all of the support. If you're interested, the link is in the description, I offer source code and early access as well as an exclusive discord chat. And I also have the link for my discord chat in the description below so if you're interested in joining, feel free to do so, we have a cool community and we just chat about stuff or you can post any questions that you have. So thanks so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and see you next time.